Hey guys, welcome to the GTX 1060 overclocking video. I have here a GTX um, 1060 from Gainward, which is not reference design. You can see it's a custom design. Uh, it's the first card I could get my hands on. Also, you can see I already attached some wires, so it's already modded uh, for overclocking. So today we will take a look, a closer look at this card specifically, how the PCB looks like, which components we have on a PCB, what we can expect um, overclocking wise from this GPU. I already pushed it quite to the limit um, considering air overclocking. And of course we will discuss how the performance is considered to the GTX, uh, to the RX 480 uh, compared with OC as well. So first of all, we will um, disassemble the card and take a, look, a closer look on the components. Um, so this is how the card looks like. I already removed uh, the cooler. I just removed it for the German version, uh, which is explain the same stuff again. So of course, just two fans here, nothing special. I removed that part. Um, now if we turn that, you can see the actual cooler, which is a heat pipe cooler. And you can see the GPU is touching here. Um, pads for the memory here and also for the VRM here. So this is the card itself. You can see the GPU here, memory is here. Also uh, the VRM for the GPU here is actually a three phase design. So you have uh, one, two, three phases uh, for the GPU itself and one phase for the memory, which is located here. And uh, also one more phase here for PLL voltage. This is the memory controller for the memory voltage. Uh, six pin connector, also this part here is a filter inductor. So it's uh, filtering the current which is coming from the six pin connector. And those three you can see here, those are actually uh, shunt resistors, small resistors which are um, used to measure the current which is flowing from the six pin um, to the card. So that's the way they uh, track the power limit. So this is actually how I bypassed the power limit. I applied some liquid metal on those um, three resistors. The cool thing about this is that you can always remove the liquid metal and those uh, get the card back to stock. Still, if you use this, um, you can lower the power limit from uh, stock is like 120% straight. And if you do that, it drops down to like 60 or 70% uh, power target. So that's perfect mod for power target. On the back, uh, nothing really special, a lot of caps here for the memory, um, two big caps for the GPU on the back. Also um, here is the voltage controller for the GPU. You can see it's modded, it's also covered by uh, tape to protect the cables. So that's it about the car for now, it's not, it's not nothing uh, special, it's just a pretty basic design, it still works quite well, even uh, on OC it worked quite good. So let's get a little bit more into details about the mod mods I did for the car. So let's talk a little bit more in detail about the mods I did. So on this picture you can see the backside area on the front side of the PCB. Also I marked uh, those three shunt resistors. Those are the resistors which are um, responsible for measuring um, the current draw from the PCI Express connector. Those have uh, 5 milliohms uh, resistance and there is an IC on this card which is measuring the voltage drop across this resistor. So if you change the resistance, but the IC is still thinking that it's 5 ohm, then you can actually trick um, the IC and it will measure a lower TDP. So that's what we do. So we just um, put some liquid metal across those resistors. So it will probably lower the resistance from 5 milliohms, maybe to 4 milliohms, and then it's um, tricking uh, the, the um, measurement of the TDP. You can just do that with liquid metal because it's very easy to apply and also very easy to remove. Also, I did um, a detailed guide on that quite a while ago on my website. I will put the link in the description so you can check that out if you want to. Maybe for your NVIDIA card, there is the detailed uh, description in there already, which might be interesting for you because this kind of mod you can actually do on each NVIDIA card. Also, here's a picture of the back of the card. You can actually see um, some very nice uh, features from Gainward. Unfortunately, they did not work, but well, if they would work, it would be really nice. So in the back, you can see on the left side, you can see a GPU area and you can see a V and VR. So the V area is to measure the voltage of the GPU, which actually works. I tested that, that's really nice. 
and the VR area is meant to be to adjust the voltage. So um, you can see on this picture I attached a 500 kilo ohm resistor to this area just to see if it works. And then I lowered the resistance but nothing changed. Then I tracked back the traces of the um, of those connectors to see where they go, what they actually do. So then I noticed that those traces end up at a not populated um, solar pad. So then I noticed that it's probably not going to work because um, some IC is missing. I guess Gainward did this feature for some internal testing or maybe a special OC version they have internally. Gainward, if you see this video, maybe you should do that uh, on all cards because that's actually a really nice feature. Uh, so yeah, I tried that, didn't work, so I had to come up with a different voltage modification. So what we usually do is a feedback modification, which kind of tricks uh, the voltage um, regulator uh, of the uh, GPU. So my friend Elmore um, from ASUS actually helped me to do this mod uh, because he has maybe a little bit more knowledge than me. <laughs> and uh, so what we did is uh, we removed the resistor here on the right and added a trim pot with a 25 kilo ohm between those uh, small capacitors. And now if you, uh, if you decrease the resistance, it will increase the GPU voltage because you trick the measurement of the, um, of the GPU controller. So it would think that the voltage is too low and then it starts increasing the voltage and that's the way you trick uh, actually the GPU controller. So on stock, the voltage is around 1.1 volt and with the trim pot, with the 25 kilo ohm, it starts at 1.2 volt and then you can increase it to whatever you want, maybe 1.5 volt, but that's probably too high. So on this picture, you can see the wires I attached um, for which go to the variable uh, resistor. So I guess that's it for uh, the voltage modifications itself. I just did the TDP modification and the voltage modification for the GPU. Now let's take a closer look at the benchmark results. So after I did the power target mod, the first thing I did was um, putting the card back together just to test how, hard, how high I can actually clock the, uh, the card without uh, the volt mod. So this is a result you can see. This is um, the normal 3D Mark Fire Strike, uh, non-extreme. And you can see the result is 12,300 points, which is actually not really bad. I kind of expected a little bit more about um, from this card. Uh, but you can see the GPU was running at 2025 2, uh, MHz, which was the maximum I could do without increasing the voltage. You can also see on the bottom the TDP was around uh, 60 to 70 percent, so the TDP mod worked quite well considering that before I always hit uh, the 120 percent straight. Also I want to point out that I'm not using an official uh, NVIDIA dri driver for the GTX 1060 because I did not have anything yet because currently you cannot download any driver for the 1060. So I had to use uh, the version um, 368.69 and had to modify the, uh, the driver mo manually, um, the inf file to add the support for the GTX. 1060. So after modifying uh, the card with the voltage mod, I increased the voltage from 1.1 volt to 1.245 volt on load, which seemed to be kind of the sweet spot on air. I also tried to increase higher to around 1.3 volt, but the card did not scale further. So it seems um, that this is kind of the limit what you can reach on air, uh, considering uh, the temperatures. Also, the temperature was not really bad, even at 1.245 uh, volt. The temperature on the GPU was still around 70 degrees, which is perfectly fine on load. So you can see on this result, I managed uh, to achieve 2200 megahertz on the GPU, which is really not bad. Also, the memory is running at 2371 megahertz. And the final score was uh, 13,645 with a graphics score of around 15.5 uh, K. Also, I want to point out that the card seems to benefit quite much from memory overclocking. So I increased the, uh, the clocks step by step. First, uh, the GPU with leaving the memory on stock. And I could get 12,600 points without memory OC. And then I increased the memory by 375 uh, megahertz roughly. And I gained another 1,000 points in the benchmark, which is actually really good. So it seems that the card is scaling quite well from memory OC as well. Here is another result I did with Firestrike Extreme. You can see the card hit 7053 points, uh, which is 
around 500 points lower than the score I achieved with the RX 480 on LN2. So this is actually quite close to RX 480 on OC. I'm not really sure what my impact uh, from the modified driver is on the score, on the performance. Maybe the scores we will see tomorrow in the reviews or actually today when you uh, read, when you can see this, then it's actually today. Um, not sure how the impact on the performance is from modifying the driver. Uh, from my current point of view, it looks like um, the RX 480 is actually the better option because performance wise, um, it seems to be better if you take the price into account. Still, I think overclocking wise, this card is quite impressive. I could uh, increase, if you consider the stock clock, I incre could increase the, the clock from 1500 to 2200 megahertz, which is pretty strong OC. Of course, with the voltage modification, without voltage modification, it's only 2000 megahertz. Still, it's pretty cool. Um, I hope you like this uh, small insight on the GTX 1060 OC and what you can expect from this. If you liked it, thumbs up. If not, don't do anything. <laughs> and uh, I hope you liked the video and see you soon.